2G is globally known for its broad expertise in engine technology, for its R&D in engine technology, for its project development, project engineering, and also for its broad product portfolio. But 2G is also very much specialized in digital solutions. And that's why this episode of the 2Vlog focuses on my2g.com as one of the core elements of uh, 2G's digital solutions. It was initially published already back in 2015, uh, but still we are getting lots of questions. Okay, my2g.com, what is it all about? What is the benefit and how does it work? And in order to discuss these kind of questions, uh, we have invited Marcel Sechbert uh, for this episode. Marcel is um, yeah, dealing with all the international uh, distributors and service partners around the world. And um, yeah, Marcel will uh, explain us these kind of questions and um, yeah, providing answers. So Marcel, first of all, a warm welcome. And um, yeah, the first and most important question, my2g.com, what is it? My2g.com is our partner and end customer platform where you can access all relevant data. You have access to technical data such as marketing information, sales information, service information, and furthermore, we have spare part catalogs for the end customers, for the service partners. We do have the remote control and furthermore, we have our predictive maintenance system integrated in my2g.com. Okay, so um, what I'm hearing, uh, it's not only for one specific user group. So there are several user group, let's say, that benefit in a different way from the system, right? Yes. So maybe you can elaborate a little bit on that. So how do the different customer groups or different user group uh, benefit in what way? Yeah, of course. Um, we have a bright group of customers using my2g.com. So we have um, our sales partners using the sales relevant information such as um, tender documentation, TSPs, so technical spec sheets, single line diagrams, also for the project management, engineering companies can use these information um, during the process of the sales. Then of course we have the service partners using the service relevant information. Then we have utility companies with a also portfolio of engines in their management. And of course our end customers such as biogas, natural gas, all different gas engine users on the world. Mm. I mean, it's, it's really fascinating. I mean, I'm not that much into the details, but uh, when we had this pre-discussion about this whole my2g.com, um, I was really, really uh, impressed. So uh, maybe you can explain um, how does it work here internally? I mean, 2G initially, originally is an engine manufacturer or a CHP manufacturer, also with a broad service department. But how does it work? I mean, digital solutions, I mean, there is so many complex processes behind it. How does it work here internally at 2G? Yeah. Um, as you mentioned, back in 2015, the digitization started at 2G. So My2G was, I would say, slowly growing. At the beginning, we had just a partner platform to provide our partners with information. And then we opened the system also for the different groups, um, such as end customers and what I've mentioned already before. Um, meanwhile, we have more than a handful of engineers working full time on this platform. Um, we have more than 400 million data points coming in per week, which is a, a lot, I would say. So a lot of sensor values um, and all other values coming from the engines are collected um, in our data center and then they are used in IRIS, our predictive maintenance system. Furthermore, our software development has created years ago already the remote control so this is to be found in the plant manager. And then we had another department integrated right now in the digitization. That's the spare part catalog department. So spare parts. We have a digital version for each engine type, inclusive pictures for um, an easier identification of spare parts. And also over the time, like claim manager was developed, the service planner, the shop, and also training department has been integrated. And as you can see, on the screen furthermore applications. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, I guess uh, that uh, all these uh, nice and very innovative things also make 2G a uh, quite, uh, let's say, um, attractive employer here in this area, right? Yes, um, I would say when we started with the digitization department, 
um, yeah, it has been two or three people at the beginning. And now, unfortunately, the viewer cannot see where we are sitting. We are here in the digitization department. We are um, surrounded with all the developers in this great area and coming out of this great area. And um, yeah, I think we have, if I take a look, round about 35 people in this building, all working in the digitization for different areas, software development, and also um, the IT department is here. Yeah. Well, um, we have now heard lots of things from the background, a lot of theoretical things. We're standing here in front of this, uh, or in front of your laptop and in front of this nice big screen with all the um, yeah, colored shaped uh, things. So Marcel, maybe you want to give us a practical insight. What does it mean and how does it work? Yes, thank you. First of all, we have now the overview of mitog.com. That's the starting page when we log in into mitog.com. So I will start with the top left button with a tile. We have the service planner. So service planner is an internal and also an external use tool. Um, we are planning our service jobs through our ERP system into the planner and sharing it also with our service providers in Germany and also um, other countries. So that's the service job then for the subcontractor and they are performing the work and sending us a job sheet back. Then we have the spare part catalog. The spare part catalog is a tool where the service partner, service provider, or also the end customer can identify the spare parts. We do have the claim manager that's mainly used for the service partners if there's a warranty claim necessary to be handed in. We do have the shop. The shop is available in different countries such as the UK, um, Spain, Italy, France, and Germany, but for the German shop, that's also only available for Denmark, Germany, and Austria. Then we have the technical data. This is one of the um, core functions of mitog.com, I would say. So in this functions, I would just click in. We do have the information when well, I switch, of course, in English. Okay. <laughs> Uh, for marketing and publication documents, we have the product data of the 2G plans, we have the peripheral systems and some documents across the um, series like technical information, technical advices, and we have access to the service relevant documents. Um, so, so the entire portfolio is covered uh, with the uh, uh, with this uh, technical data? Yes, and um, even um, it's, I would say, a, um, over our standard scope of supply. As I mentioned, we have also the peripheral systems inside, such as ORC or Noxbox, which is our own emission control, which was required and is required for the, for the 44th emission guideline and law in Germany. Is there any direct connection to the ERP or any other system? Um, the ERP system and also our um, Data management system is connected with mitog.com. So as soon we are synchronizing our data, it's also published in mitog.com. As I mentioned, the service relevant documents are also inside here. So concerning the service partners worldwide, they do have access to the relevant English documents, German documents, and some um, assisting documents for the claim manager. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to go that much in detail. We are just going back to the overview. Um, the next page is the training tile, the training ap application. In this function here, the customer can log in for an operator training or the sales and, ser um, sales and service partners can book a training online. Mm -hmm. So we have the training center here in Haig and the such or a couple of trainings are done online, but there are still some trainings that have to be done in present training. And then our sales and service partners can come to Germany to our training center or opposite way would be if there is an engine on site, we could fly to the country, inside the country, and we can hold the training. So lots of various trainings available, I, would, I see. <laughs> yes. So the next tile will be the plant manager. 
The plan manager is one of our core functions of my2g.com. Um, this application includes the remote control and also the reporting system. Um, as you can see, it takes a bit longer when I'm dialing in because I have access to the global engines. So it's based like a, a dashboard functions, what the user can use for his own. Um, for example, an end customer would only see his engine if we're using the right ID number, of course. So what does it mean for a service partner distributor? He would see his own engines. Yes, he, he would see his fleet, mm -hmm. his engines. And um, furthermore, not only his engine, when we go to the map view, he will also see his engine on a card. Mm -hmm. If it's running, if it's in a fold, we have this auto fresh function here that the data is automatically refreshed all 60 seconds. So we can use this as a real monitoring system. Mm -hmm. So as soon an engine um, would stop un on an unplanned way, the message here operation would turn into fold and this would then also appear on the map view. Okay, and this is valid for the entire world, so for all countries. Yes, uh, to G sector for this is valid for the whole world. As you can see, this engine is based in France. Mm -hmm. And also, if we click on the engine himself, we have a better and brighter overview. We have some actual values. We could see the current messages, some appointments which are plans or tickets. So mm -hmm. if there's a ticket from the service um, still ongoing, the customer would see it here. And of course, a 2G message. 2G message means a customer can um, apply for a message. So uh, like a monthly report or failure state means as soon as the engine switches off an unplanned failure, he would receive an email with all relevant information. So even what is to do to bring the engine back up running, and also a description of the failure, how it appears. And furthermore, this is linked into the other functions from my2g.com. We can jump into the project documents. We can see the monthly report, which I can also book here on monthly report. Um, with one click, I could dial in. I can dial in with my service dongle. And if the engine is connected to Iris, our predictive maintenance system, we can also join and click into this Iris. And how is that connected to the colleagues here at the headquarters? So are the colleagues here constantly monitoring these kind of things? Um, we are using in Germany a ticket system. So as soon an engine is switching off um, in a fold, we are receiving a ticket. This is uh, collected in our um, ticket system and we are working off the tickets, of course. Mm -hmm. But um, if you see also in our subsidiaries, then they're using my2g.com as a monitoring system. So they have a big television on the wall with my2g.com as a monitoring system. The fleet is not that big mm -hmm. as compared to Germany with over 5,000 engines in the field. So of course, if we would have a television, then we would need this <laughs> huge screen in the back of me just to monitor all engines. Um, but definitely up to a size of 500 engines and more, of course, this monitoring system can be used. Okay. And I will just jump back into the overview. So we have the project documents. And the pro project documents is collecting data concerning one particular engine. So if you have an ID number, like something, just uh, a random number, which is easy, then you can see protocols and reports from service and commissioning. So each service, which is done by 2G, has normally a um, digital worksheet. This is automatically copied in the system. And also, if we just um, recently take another so, ID number. So the system also avoids a lot of paperwork. <laughs> yes, it does. So everybody is speaking about paperless office. Mm. And this is one part we are um, giving to that. And again, this is also valid for the service partners. So all the service partners that are taking care for a certain number of engines, they do also have access to these kind of documents. Yes. Okay. So last but not least, I will skip downloads and box manager. 
um, and connect. That they are not that important um, for the global partners and end customers. So we will go into Iris. Um, we, are, we have spoken a lot now about predictive maintenance. Um, predictive maintenance for us is established with our um, artificial intelligent, intelligence called Iris. That's an intelligent reporting and information system. That's a shortcut Iris. So what is our predictive maintenance system? We are receiving the 400 million data points a week and our um, intelligent reporting information system is looking for deviations in the parameters. And as soon as something is going out of the range, it informs us and say, hey, before the engine stops and creating downtime, please react and check the engine. Mm -hmm. So such as uh, oil pressure low, it's not critical. The oil pressure drops, so it could be that the oil filter is blocked or whatever. So not critical, failure messages, but this can create a downtime in the future. What does it mean here, the numbers 50 and orange and green 20, yellow 30? So where do these uh, numbers uh, come from? The numbers are coming from a kind of a seriousness. So um, we have a look. Um, what is this type of uh, message or deviation we are detecting? Is it, um, is it, can it cause a problem for the engine or is it just a moderate or non e not even serious problem for the engine? We have the low messages, moderate, considerable, high risk, or extreme risk. Mm -hmm. Means our um, system detects, for example, valve noise or unexpected noises from the engine. And if that's going out of the range, then the engine informs us and we are um, checking the engine immediately or we can form the service partner if he has not activated this on his side and we can inform him, hey, please check the engine. There's something going out of the range. And of course, um, with our new 4,000 hours maintenance interval, this is necessary also for the end customers. They have to check on a regular basis if the engine is reporting hmm. messages which have to be checked. Okay, cool. Anything else here in the system you'd like to show us? I mean, I could uh, continue the whole day, so maybe it would be better if um, I will um, explain and show you something live on the engine. That sounds great, sounds great. One question in between or before. Um, I mean, there are um, really um, lots of things and I mean, we have only, let's say, um, uh, we only move through the surface, uh, let's say, and not in the details. So if I'm a service partner or a customer, say, okay, I want to make use of the system. Is there any kind of tutorial or are you training the people or how does it work? Yes, we do have a um, tutorial video and also we do individual trainings. Mm -hmm. So if there's a new service partner and uh, we are signing the contracts, then normally there is an onboarding procedure and we are explaining my2g.com and all processes behind. Okay, I see, I see. Well, great. Um, I mean, you were already saying, uh, let's have a look at a real engine, uh, how the connection is between the system and an engine. So, um, yeah, let's have a walk at the shop floor. Yeah, let's go. Reliability and availability is key when it comes to the operation of a CHP plant. We're now standing here in a test bench uh, in a, a container with a six-cylinder engine. And yeah, Marcel is now going to show us how my2g.com is directly connected to the mechanics and the control system um, of a 2G CHP. Yes, so we're here in the test bench. Um, we can see here the control system from the 2G CHP. Um, as soon as a failure appears, the control system will send information to my2g.com. As you mentioned before, availability is key, so that will reduce the downtime as much as possible. So to see what happens exactly in detail, I would ask you please to simulate a failure. There should be a small sensor right in front of you. Please just disconnect the cable. This one here? Yes, please. What is, what is it in detail? That's a boost pressure sensor. Okay. Yeah, done. So as soon as you have disconnected it, it simulates now a broken wire or a broken sensor. Okay. And now the failure appears on the display. And this failure is also now sent to mitogy.com to see this failure message and further details in the system. So that's what, I, what I'm going to explain to you right now. 
So we have this failure message here. It shows that the measurement signal fault charge pressure and it explains here what the error source is. So even the um, part number or not the part number more or less the um, description of the sensor is written here where you also find it in the wiring diagram. You have the reason why it fails or so a possible reason. You see it right here mm -hmm. and also solution what you could do to solve this issue. Mm -hmm. Okay and this is already real life and this is yeah part of your day-by-day -day business. Yes it's available um, all over the world for our service partners and part wise the end customers. Um, it's used by our internal staff and also by our external partners. Really, really impressive. Marcel, thanks a lot. It was really um, yeah, impressive also for me. Also, I learned lots of new things today. And um, yeah, thanks to the audience uh, for listening and uh, for yeah, getting an insight into my2g.com. We hope that you've understood uh, some more things about it and uh, learned about the benefits. And yeah, see you next time uh, for the next vlog and bye-bye.